Welcome everyone, you are listening to the new episode of the Votes and Seeds podcast series of the Center for Political Science at Matthias Corvinus Collegium. The second round of the French snap legislative election was held on the 7th of July, which resulted in a hung parliament as none of the party blocs gained an absolute majority. The main question after the first round was whether the Le Pen-led national rally would ensure an absolute majority in the National Assembly, which eventually didn't happen. What happened at the polls? What was the campaign like? What was the stake of the election? And uh, last but not least, who will form the new government? In today's episode, we will discuss these and similar questions with Alexandre Pesse, founder and executive director of the Institut de Formation Politique, a conservative training institute in Paris. Alexandre, thank you for accepting our invitation. It's a true pleasure to have you today. Thank you very much, Annick, to be with you. Thank you for invitation. I think it's worth starting with the the background of the background of, of what uh, what took place in, in France, uh, namely namely the the, the snap elections. Uh, so, the, to the surprise of many, President Emmanuel Macron decided to dissolve the National Assembly after uh, seeing the devastating result of its party in the European parliamentary parliament election. What could have been his strategy? What could be hoped for? With this move, what do you think? Uh, can can we somehow reconstruct his ideas behind this move? Yeah, Janik, it was very surprisingly that he called for new election, uh, that he didn't have to call for election. It's uh, really rare that a president who is in office is going to call for election on the congressional election. So we try to wonder, and I think even his team, even the, the government, uh, couldn't believe it or were surprised about it. So after, like you say, we can try to rewrite and, and try to understand what why he could have done that. The first one, since he didn't have the majority, the absolute majority, and it was hard for him to pass strong uh, measure, um, maybe its goal, he hoped that people will give him an absolute majority. That could be uh, one reason he did that. Um, many says he has kind of arrogant temperament. So I think if I go, if I if I he runs himself, he would bring a majority of people behind him, like in the presidential race, he did. Um, the the second reason he could have done that is to say, okay, look, guys, you're blocking my government. I cannot pass laws. So let's so let's show to the people that yourself you can have a majority, or you can build a positive majority that would replace my government. And in that matter, it didn't happen because nobody, as you know, and as you said, had a majority, neither the left, neither the globalist uh, party of Macron, neither the right. So the third reason uh, could have been, okay, um, I don't have, it's, I'm, I'm not in an easy situation with this government who can't pass law, uh, I'm criticized. Let's give the power to the opposition, who's going to show in two years how they can deal with the Olympic Games, with a budget coming up in October. You know, the, the financial crisis and financial budget of France is a disaster. And everybody knows that in October, it will be impossible for Macron to pass his budget. Um, so um, it, it may be a way to say, OK, you're going to deal with it, whether the right, whether the left, you'll be in charge and you'll see how incompetent you are to resolve this problem. and then. Our, our party, our people can be in power again um, in 2027, which is the next presidential race and next president congressional election. So that could be the reason why he did that, but maybe there is another hidden reason we don't know yet. Okay, and now turning to the, the true political stake of this election, what, what was it in your opinion for the political powers on the one hand and for the French citizens on the other? And I'm partly asking this, uh, because the turnout was roughly uh, 20 percentage points higher in both rounds than uh, two years ago, reaching nearly uh, 67 percent uh, bo both in the first and the second round. So, what what was the stake? What how could how could the the, the French citizens perceive this this chance uh, for it, for electing? Yeah, Janik, you're right. The good point uh, up to 20 points of participation in the election it showed a big interest in the French people, but the results show that almost every tendencies uh, were motivated to vote. So uh, the nationalist right has a chance like never to win. 
So I think they were able to mobilize uh, its people. The, the left had also a chance to, to win. Uh, so also they were mobilized. And, and both of them were mobilized against uh, Macron, to replace Macron, to beat Macron. There is an anti-Macron uh, tendency that is very strong on the right and the left. And then you can see that Macron finally didn't come out with his allies, didn't crash like we maybe many expected. So he, he, he went down for sure, but he didn't crash. So it makes this situation where, once again, instead of a two-party system that we traditionally have in the French, in the Fifth Republic, uh, party, a strong party on the right with some allies and a strong party on the left with some allies, we now have a very new situation with clearly a three-party coalition, with the coalition of the left, with an alliance of the Green, the Socialist, uh, and uh, what you would call the diversity, the minorities, the Islamists too, clearly, and then you have the globalist around uh, Macron. Um, and then you have the nationalist uh, around Marine Le Pen, uh, who went wider than just her party this time. So what in the state of mind of the people, I think for, for many was to win or to block the other to win. You know, like uh, many on the left maybe went to say, we don't want uh, the nationalist right to win. Maybe many people of Macron who didn't were not voting anymore for him say, "Oh, we should go to make sure the national front, uh, national rally doesn't get into power." And at the same time, you had uh, some of Macron, some of national right who say, "Let's go vote, otherwise we're gonna have uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, uh, leftist uh, party in power." So I think it was like a a, a a battle of who's gonna be first and third, second. I would say the. Uh, many topics uh, mobilize, mobilize uh, the, the people, maybe recent topics, and maybe we'll talk about it uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, exactly, not that later, because uh, now I would, I would uh, say, say or, or discuss the, uh, the, the campaign, campaign topics, the campaign dynamics. So, so those who follow the French domestic politics in recent years would definitely name the economic situation, in particular inflation, unemployment, uh, public security or maybe public insecurity or, or immigration as the key uh, campaign uh, topics. Would they be right if, if they named these? And if so, could you add some other issues, maybe war in, in Ukraine to some extent? And what uh, positions did the key parties take on, on, uh, on these issues in the campaign? Yeah, it's very interesting, Janik, what happened. Uh, if you were the presidential race in 2025, you would have the question of environment or the question of uh, war in Ukraine who were pretty big topics, um, at least in the media, in the debate, so that it kind of shaped that question toward Macron and toward the Green Party. But two years later, 2024, um, um, I said 25, but it was 22, sorry, 2022. The last election. So in 2024, this election, the topics were very different. We didn't talk about the war in Ukraine, didn't talk about environment, the big three topics that the one you said. Economics with inflation, immigration with 500,000 new immigrants every year. We reach uh, um, incredible numbers of immigrants coming in in France. Um, Macron is more than 2 million that came in seven years that is present is just uh, changing, you know, the population and everywhere now. It was not just in the cities or in the suburbs. Now, even little cities uh, are touched by the immigration problem and hard not to link it with a criminality problem because you may have heard about the statistic in France. Uh, they are forbidden to do racial or um, religious statistics, but we have them. We have them through either someone of the state who came out with the information or some demograph of the state who did the study and came out. So it made a scandal, but we got some information like, for example, you know, in, in jail in France, who are packed, um, we don't have enough jail to put all the criminals. So if you are condemned to less than two years of jail in France, you simply go, don't go to jail. Uh, and second, uh, 70%. 70% at least of people in jail, uh, of criminals, 
are Muslim. And the Muslim population is officially between 10 to 12%. And so you see the, the major difference in that. So it's hard not to link criminality and immigration uh, when you when you see, um, see that. So there were clearly hot topics. And there is not a day now without someone being stabbed. Like the stabbing is, it was something very aware in France. Now there is 120 stabbing attack uh, every day. Um, you have um, uh, second, uh, you had a lot of uh, people, uh, French people being killed. You heard maybe in the south of France, it's rugby players. Uh, you have se several uh, cases like that. So I think that's kind of make the people uh, a bit fade with it. Like you heard what happened in Great Britain, D difficult not to make the links. We're in si si same situation, Great Britain, Belgium, Netherlands. France, Germany, all the West countries are facing the same problem. So there were the key three topics, and that's explained the major uh, jump of the national rally in the EU election. Like they, they, they arrived first by far, by more than 32%. That was historical for any political party to reach this score that high. When many think the national rally would never reach more than 20, 25%, they really reach another level now at this election. So in the congressional election, just a few weeks later, that we had in June, you had two elections, Janik. You had the first round election and the second round election. And the topics were not the same at all. First round election, immigration, economics, and criminality. National rally arrived first. So the polls project on the second round election and say, due to the result of national rally at the EU election, at this first round, they can potentially have a majority. And even, why not, an absolute majority? But that's an analysis that is a static one. If all the candidates stay for the second round, like you can stay for the second round in France, if you got more than 12.5% of people who were enlisted. So that means you potentially have three to four candidates on the second round. So if that happened, like it happened normally, National Rally could have had um, a majority of the seat. But what the poll didn't say is a political change between the two rounds and the fact that both Macron party and Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, party, both the left and the globalists say, we prefer Macron instead of national rally for the left. We prefer the left allied with the Islamists than national rally for the globalist Macron. And I think that was a surprise for many that it went that far. Um, because, for example, what happened with, uh, with the fight in Israel and Palestine? Many of the left were so uh, actively supporting Palestine that they disturbed many kind of pro-Israelis on the left or in Macron's side. So anyway, just to make it short, uh, that changed the second round because instead of having three to four candidates with a national rally being first, and so have a big chance to win their seats, there would be only two because the two other will withdraw, one or two other will withdraw and say, we vote against national rally. And that's why in many districts, the national rally is more than 40 to 45%, but it's not reaching 50%. So uh, they could almost have 50 to 100 more seats if it had been uh, a classical election where people would have stayed to defend their chance on the second round. That's what makes the big change between what people expect or thought will be and what could happen. So you, so you argue that uh, this, uh, this difference between the first and the second round uh, largely stems from the special char characteristic of the, the major majority electoral system in, in, in France. Uh, and can we, if, if we, if we uh, think about it a little bit more, can we call this, this uh, coordinated action between center and left uh, uh, against or vis-a-vis -vis the 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 uh, national rally kind of cordon sanitaire or at least a legislative election version of the classical uh, cordon cordon sanitaire uh, against le pen's party so is this is this the the correct uh, kind of a correct interpretation of what happened yes janik first round of the election it was a debate on the topics immigration economic Criminality. The second round was a referendum of do you want Marine Le Pen or do you don't you don't want Marine Le Pen? 
they switched to a referendum and that changed totally the election landscape. And in that fact, they say, if you don't want Marie Le Pen, we need to do a cordon sanitaire or a Republican uh, saving of democracy or whatever they call it. Um, and that has less impact on French people, much less than it used to be. Uh, in the 90s or beginning of the 2000s, just to remind our listener of France, um, Jean-Marie Le Pen, when he was at the first round of the presidential election with 18%, he reached the second round for the first time against Jacques Chirac. But on the second round, he got 18% of the vote. So the coalition of all the opponents were 82%. Now the opposition of all the other is, is 60, 60%, you know, maybe less. Marine Le Pen did 42%, so 58 So the opposition side, uh, the cordon sanitaire impact is lower, but it's still strong enough to block national rally to arrive in power to have a majority yet. And obviously, in encouraging to give the French nationality to a lot of uh, foreigners is not going to help. They give 110,000 French nationality to people who arrive in France. And in the polls, uh, we have statistics that are officially, that we are allowed actually based on the, on the religious. And we say, for example, the growing population to vote is a Muslim population. And they vote for the left by 70 to 80 percent each election. So um, it's interesting to see that even these people who are sad to be conservative against gay marriage, for traditional marriage, for traditional value, at the end of the day, they're going to choose to vote for a party who is for gay marriage, transsexual, um, social things that are totally opposed uh, socially. Uh, it's very interesting coalition, very surprising one where feminists, green, Islamists are, uh, are are sticking together. And you see a lot of people of the left um, who are switching. The historical party, the socialist party, is a very secular, like even anti-religion party. Want the religion out of the public space. Now, the one who is, they were the defender of laicity. Laicity was was a separation of church and state, who was like, religions, religions must be temporal and spiritual must be separate. Uh, and it drive to laicism, which is an ideology that wants everything that is linked with the religion of the public space. They are the one who would say, you shouldn't even say Merry Christmas because it's still offensive, offending uh, to Christians. So the same people, like Jean-Luc Mélenchon, was one of the key guys in this laicist movement, is now the defender with his friends, of the Muslims asking for specific rights, specific laws, specific celebration for implemented religious principle of the of the Quran into uh, everyday life, into our public sphere, sphere, like having halal food in school for kids, having veil for anybody to go in a public square, schools or university. Uh, that's very interesting what's uh, happening and how some flip flop in their topics. Uh, well. One last question, specifically about the, the election result. If you had to name the winner, winners, losers, or losers of this election, who would who would you name? And of course, I'm uh, particularly interested in uh, Mélenchon's party, uh, Macron's uh, Renaissance uh, party, and uh, of course, Le Pen's uh, national rally. Mm. I, I would say uh, that the the three coalition won and the three coalition lost. The three coalition won in the sense that they did better than they could expect to do one or two years ago. Uh, the left was was very divided and they were able to ally in this anti-national rally position. They were ab uh, allowed to ally. Really different tendencies, tendencies were very opposed. Um, and they did a pretty good score. They don't have the majority, but they did a, big, a good score. Macron... Uh, same is really going down and down and down, and he pretty save uh, the the essential. Their people are still have a lot of congressmen seat and could potentially have the government if they take some of the left, some of the right with them. They could he could have a, a, a slightly majority one, uh, difficult to hold for a long time, but he could have a majority 
Um, and I think that's what he's working on during this summer. That's why in August, we still don't have a government because he it's, it's, it's says it's because of Olympic Games. No, he's trying to get alliance. And on the third part, the national rally, uh, he's losing the sense that he doesn't have the majority, but he's very winning in the sense of if you see the results he had. Don't forget, before 2022, they had seven or nine seats. In 2022, all the polls said he would have 20 to 30 seats. They got 89 seats. That was already a big surprise. European election, they were told to get maybe the same number of seats. No, 25%. They got 32%. Congressional election, they were said, say, maybe they maintain or no, they, they went from 89 to 140 seats. And more, more important, part of the Republican Party who had in their genetic code since 86 in Jacques Chirac forbid any people of the Republican Party to ally with the National Rally, many of them now are ready and allied with National Rally. That was a historical move that the president of the Republican called Eric Ciotti did. And I think that's going to affect the landscape, the political of landscape in France a lot. Because the, the Republican Party now, that may be the only one who also win and lose in the sense of they win, they maintain few congressmen, but they lose also in the sense that they have never been in a catch-22 like, like before. It's the hardest catch-22 for them. Will they join Macron? Will they join National Rally? Or will they stay and slowly die? They're really in a difficult position. So that's why uh, they, once again, it's, it's whole are a good, a good chance for the next election to win. Uh, and the next election will be either June 2025, uh, when Macron can call for a new election. He has to wait a year. He did election June 24, so he has to wait June 25. Uh, or to win the presidential race in 2027. Mélenchon, Marine Le Pen, or someone from Macron, like Gabriel Attal, has a, still a chance to win. Very interesting what's happening in France. And thank you uh, for having a look and give me the chance to give you uh, some answer to your question, Danny. Returning back uh, uh, to, to Le, Le Pen and her party, uh, the, 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 uh, the popular support for Le Pen and her party is growing higher and higher from election to election. Do you still see any room for further expansion for Le Pen and her party? Or, or is there still a kind of a glass ceiling above Le Pen's uh, head? If you had asked me the question a few months ago, I would have I would have told you there is a still an important glass ceiling. But what we saw in the last election that really the the way the change of really of scale of votes. You know when you you slowly went to eighteen to twenty to twenty five, but then when you jump from twenty five to thirty two, and and from nine to one hundred forty seats, I think now there's there's really place for them to continue to grow. And they, they they know what was blocking them. And I think the strongest thing is that it's in the leadership. I think they know what is blocking them to go higher. Um, for a long time, they will say, we're not left and right. And basically, we hope to have the left in this vote. Now they understand uh, that they're not going to have the left to vote for them. The reserve of vote is more for the right, on, coming from the right, from the Republican voter, basically. And I think they're starting to reach them that it's cracking in the leadership and a lot among their voters. And that is on economic. And I think they, they're working to have a more uh, sound economic uh, platform because on immigration, criminality, they are more credible than anybody. So to answer to also Marine Le Pen uh, is succeeding to diversify his team. We saw, we said for a long time, she was the only leader, just her, there is nobody. Now you have Jordan Barlea with a lot of talent. And you see other coming up, and there seems to be a, a lie and strong behind her. So I think they still have a potential. And since the problem are not resolved, the economic problem, the immigration problem, uh, and the criminals problem, I don't see how they're not going to continue to grow. You know. And uh, if if you think about this election as, as part of or or on a, on a longer horizon what what can this mean in the development of french politics and the the party system the party competition in the long run is this a milestone in some regard or it's it's just the it just fits in the trend uh, we have witnessed uh, for for years or 
for since since many elections now how how do you see this i think 2027 will be an important uh date because the presidential rate election um at the end you are at the second round you can only have two candidates and i think you'll have the winner and the opposition uh what i can't tell you is who is going to be the first two will it be macron candidate and marine le pen uh marine le pen and melanchon why not melanchon and which is less probable but melanchon versus the macron candidate and that will have a huge impact on the congressional election that will occur a few weeks later because after the presidential race you always have congressional election usually so that will give a strong majority to whoever win and if it doesn't that means really we enter a new a new political uh, uh, landscape uh, with this three party coalition lasting would be surprising due to our majority system with two round uh, but maybe it could last Yannick. But I think the ra- prisoners' race, once again, will make cl- will clear up things. And after Macron, Macron cannot be candidate next time. So will Macronist survive Macron? Not sure. My final question: uh, You finished with Macron. I start my last question with Macron. So, so the president said in mid July that he would not appoint a new prime minister until the end of the Olympics, uh, that is uh, the middle of August. In your opinion, what is the most likely scenario? Which political parties will form uh, the new government? Okay, if he wants to have the majority, he has to pick someone coming either for the center-left party or the socialist party or the Green Party or um, but a moderate one that can be supported by his coalition or someone from the Republican Party uh, that can attract this 40 congressmen plus, is, plus some of the center-left that could accept to join in the government. I think he's working for that to create a centrist majority. And the the difficulty he has is whoever prime minister he take, they're gonna say if he's from the right, the Republican Party, they're gonna say, Oh, it's a government of the right. So the pressure will be on the left not to go. If it's someone on the left, the pressure will be put on the Republican. So, but he can pick only one prime minister. So maybe he can correct that with a government after to really reach a wider uh, government. He may succeed to do that. But I don't see how it can last uh, the vote in the Congress because when the opposition uh, has a majority and accept to vote a majority to expel the government uh, during the budget in October, uh, I, 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 it's going to be difficult for them to stay in power. Here, here would be my answer, Jan. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you overall for sharing your thoughts, uh, Alexander, about the French legislative election. I think I'm... I'm convinced that we had a gen- genuine insight into the most recent uh, developments of French politics. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Janik, for your invitation. And thank you. And hello to all your listener. <laughs> yeah, the, the dear listeners, you. now turning, they're turning to you, like Alexander. Thank you for being with us as well. And please stay tuned for the upcoming votes and seats episodes as well. Goodbye, everyone.